Hello, George Romanich here. In today's video, I would like to give you a very basic high-level overview of the importance of water in the atmosphere and atmospheric sciences. Of course, all of us know that water is crucial for life on this planet. And it is also a fundamental substance in the research related to oceanography, hydrology, water resources, many fields of engineering. But water is also of fundamental importance in atmospheric sciences. That's because most weather changes are associated actually with phase changes of water. That's because when water is changing phases, it is either releasing or taking very large amount of energy from the system, and the system is the atmosphere. So that brings me to the first point, very important point of this video, and that is that at the environmental pressures and temperatures that we observe in our atmosphere, water is the only substance really that exists in all three phases, namely as vapor or steam, as engineers often call it, liquid water and ice or ice crystals. So if you take, for example, a cloud in tropical regions, let's say this is the surface of the earth, this is tropical region, and we have some small cloud stratocumulus or cumulus cloud over there, then that cloud is made up of water. But we have to be precise and define what do we mean by water. Well, this volume of the cloud is made up of liquid water, and I will use green to indicate liquid water, and water vapor, which I will indicate with red color, the colors over here. So, as you can see, this volume of the cloud is, of course, air, but in terms of water, it is water vapor and liquid water. However, if we now go to mid-latitudes, and uh, mid-latitudes like, let's say, Canada, Northern Canada, particularly now in winter, as it is winter when I'm recording this video, then we have surface of the Earth over here, and we take cloud now in mid-latitudes in winter, let's take some fat cloud like Nimbostratus, something like this. NS stands for Nimbostratus. I still did not talk about types, species of clouds, but Nimbostratus cloud is cloud associated with that very long precipitation that lasts for hours or days. And now, in this Nimbostratus cloud, we might have, for sure, water vapor everywhere in the cloud. Now, in the lower parts of the cloud, we will also have liquid water, lower and middle parts of the cloud. We will have liquid water, but in the upper parts of this cloud, we will also have ice crystals of various forms, shapes, sizes, which I indicated here with blue. So you see, in this volume of the cloud, we have all three phases of water coexisting at the same time. I will have entire playlist on cloud microphysics, where we will discuss how condensation happens, how ice crystals form, grow, how precipitation develops and so on. It's going to be amazing, so subscribe. But here, I just want to tell you the importance of water, because if we now take any other gas, let's say nitrogen, which is 78% of air, well, it always stays as a gas in our atmosphere. Or uh, take oxygen, which is 21% of air that you and I breathe, it does not go through these three phases. Only water vapor, namely H2O, exhibit phase changes in our environmental pressures and temperature. Now, speaking of these phase changes, let us describe that in a little bit more details. So, if I have here, let me see, if I indicate here ice, if I indicate with green liquid water,
and with red as I did before I indicate water vapor then let us discuss phase changes between th these three states of water well ice to liquid I hope everybody uh, knows that ice to liquid is uh, called melting now liquid to ice is known as freezing and as we know water freezes at zero degrees celsius in general which means not always and in clouds water can stay liquid below zero degrees how is that possible that's called super cooled water again stay tuned i will describe that but in general when you put water in freezer it freezes at zero degrees celsius now liquid to vapor that would be called evaporation and vapor to liquid well that would be called condensation Now, of course, a million dollar question is, is it possible to go directly from ice to vapor? Namely, is it possible to skip liquid state and go ice to vapor? Yes, that is possible. And that is called sublimation. And we will discuss that. That also happens in clouds, by the way. And consequently, it is also possible to, sort of speak, uh, go directly from vapor to ice. Uh, what I wanted to say, sort to of speak, condensate directly from vapor to ice, but we do not call it condensation, we call it deposition. Now, as I said in this video, I don't want to put numbers here and go into more details how these processes happen exactly. But what I will say is the following. You can see that in this schematic, there are arrows pointing from left to right and there are arrows pointing from right to left. Arrows pointing from left to right all processes from left to right take energy from the system okay and that means temperature of the system drops temperature of parcel of air where melting happens or evaporation happens temperature decreases on the other hand we have arrows going from right to left in this schematic these arrows represent processes that are releasing energy into the system. Release of energy. And water has very high heat capacity and latent heat, or rather heat associated with either taking or releasing energy is uh, very, very substantial. And that's why water plays such an important role in in the atmosphere now <clears throat> let's see let's discuss for example how evaporation can take energy from the system i'll give you a perfect example the perfect example is the following you decide to take shower and you're taking shower and you notice over there there is no towel you forgot towel you finish your shower, shower shower and you run across the room to get that towel as you are running across the room you feel cold but how is that possible you just took hot shower and you were hot while under the shower but now you feel cold 
Ah, that warm water from your skin is evaporating. And notice that evaporation takes energy from the system. And the system is your skin, your body, and you feel that as a drop of temperature. You feel cold. Now, I know, I know, some of you are saying like, oh, but wait, Professor Romanich, I actually take cold showers. I shower with cold water. I think it was Winston Churchill who said, if a man tells you he's taking showers with cold water, be careful. He might lie more important things in life as well. So that's what I have to say about that. I mean, give me a break. Everybody is taking hot showers. 97% of climate change on this planet is because we are taking hot showers. So, this is the basic overview of the importance of water vapor in atmospheric sciences. Why do we care about these processes? Because they either take energy or release energy. Water vapor is the only substance that can be in three phases in the atmosphere. And in the next videos, we are going to look into it in, in more details. In next video, in particular, we are going to investigate various ways we use to quantify the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. What are the variables, namely, that we use to express the amount of water vapor in a parcel of air? Until that video, goodbye.